Hello folks, I'm UK Air Rifleman and in this instructional movie I will mainly be passing on the experience I've learned from others regarding the control of feral pigeons and the brown rat. I say this because my feral pigeon shooting experience and rat shooting experience is actually very low as I film this video. It's not through a lack of skill or knowledge but more through the lack of opportunities. I'm also including two species in one here because I feel most of the methods and where to shoot these quarry are the same on the whole and it is possible to have a session where both are targeted. So we will start with the feral pigeon. The feral pigeon is basically a homing pigeon turned wild. Its features and its lineage are closely aligned with the protected species of the rock dove whose natural habitat is coastal cliff faces. Pigeon fanciers have kept pigeons for hundreds of years and it is a serious hobby in its own right. However, despite being called homing pigeons, some of them don't make it back to the loft and end up making a new home on the farmyard or in town and city centres where they then start to copiously breed. The high rise buildings of the city and narrow ledges of farmyard crossbeams mimicking their ancestors wild habitat. One important note to make is that the feral pigeon, like its domesticated brethren, appear in a massive variety of colours, from pure white to more like a rock dove proper. On the whole you would think that they wouldn't be a problem. Their impact on the ecosystem where they are found is relatively small. However, the main reason these birds are currently listed for control on the general licence for pest birds is for crop protection and disease control. They produce copious amounts of droppings which is polluting all by itself. However, the excrement also acts as a vector for multiple diseases that infect humans and livestock. On the farm, they can be a particular nuisance, spreading or causing disease amongst livestock and farm workers and taking the expensive feed left out for the livestock. On the whole, the amateur air rifle marksman will target these animals on the farmyard whereas professional pest controllers are sometimes called into clear pigeons in the towns and cities using similar equipment in some cases. An interesting note to add is that in the UK it is illegal to use lamps, thermal or infrared lighting devices to shoot birds after dusk, but the feral pigeon is the exception to this rule. So on that note we will move on to the methods used by the air rifle marksman. The air rifle was practically invented for this sort of vermin control. It uses relatively cheap ammunition. It's not too powerful, so it will not damage farm infrastructure in most cases. And the sound of the shot does not startle livestock, especially where a moderator is used. It's the perfect tool for the job. A shotgun on a farmyard close to livestock is definitely not the way to control this animal. Feral pigeons rarely stray too far from their chosen habitat. There is no need for them to. They have shelter, copious amounts of food and a perch or nest, all within easy reach, so this makes it difficult to get them at other locations away from the livestock for the shotgunner. Farmyards are busy places with people constantly present on the largest farms and so the birds are used to seeing people and are, on the whole, not wary of you even in the open with no camouflage. So camouflage clothing and hides are certainly not necessary. The daytime method is pretty much the same as the nighttime method. You walk around the farmyard looking into sheds and especially the beams of the shed roofs to see if you can spot a bird. A minimum amount of stealth may be required when the birds have been heavily targeted and so it's good practice to peek into sheds on your left if you are right handed exposing as little of yourself to them as possible walking around the yard anti-clockwise. The opposite is true if you are left-handed. The only difference at night is that you intend to illuminate your target with a lamp. A colour filter is a good idea as pure white light can startle the birds. I recommend red or green filters for them. Infrared and thermal isn't available to some shooters due to its high costs. But it is an extremely efficient way to target feral pigeons as the light is invisible to them. The birds are particularly easy to target at night time, mainly because they are extremely reluctant to give up their roosting perches and again do not regard people as overly dangerous to them. 
Two or more marksmen working as a team can be an extremely efficient way to clear feral pigeons from a farm. This is because each time a shot is taken, the birds sometimes take off and circle round, returning some time later, sometimes to another building. A team of four guns can really do some damage to them. For each cycle, two guns go to one side of the shed, and the other two go to the other side, or to another shed entirely. Communication and teamwork between the guns allows for four shots to be taken simultaneously, potentially taking four animals per cycle, rather than just the one a single marksman could take. I'll speak about shot placement and safety next. In the farmyard, despite the weapons being relatively low powered, shots can still cause damage to the thin tin roofs of farm buildings or other fragile parts, such as windows or skylights. They can also still cause harm to farm workers or livestock. The birds should be shot with a good solid backstop behind them. This is normally the metal girder beams that they like to perch on. You must also keep an eye out for livestock or even other people that could potentially encroach on your line of sight. I also prefer heart and lung shots on these animals as the pellet is less likely to pass straight through and pass on or ricochet around the shed. This is also important when taking roof perched pigeons on top of the sheds with no backstop, but still plan for a safe fallout zone behind the target regardless. Headshots can be taken, but there is more chance of a miss, and also the pellet can continue on after hitting your target with enough velocity to cause damage and harm. All shot pigeons should be collected as soon as possible, especially those that fall amongst the livestock otherwise they will get trampled and also provide direct contact to the livestock from disease. Feral pigeons, due to the diseases that they potentially carry, should not be consumed but disposed of in a safe way. Whilst picking up, it is good practice to wear latex gloves to handle the shot birds. If you enter a pen with livestock in it, be extremely careful as the livestock could present a danger to yourself. That about covers feral pigeons. They are not an overly challenging quarry on the whole, and the beginner who has had plenty of target practice prior to their first live quarry shoot should look for this type of permission first in my opinion. It is relatively easy to get this kind of permission because it's a filthy job and the air rifle is the best way to control this animal and the farmer or landowner knows this too. The same can be said of the brown rat which we will move on to next. I needn't describe a brown rat in too much detail. It's one of the most recognisable animals in the world. The brown rat is listed on the general licence for pest mammals. This is due to a massive list of reasons on the whole, but for our purposes, the justification is the same as the feral pigeon. Rats can also copiously breed and in recent years have developed a resistance to most baiting and poisoning methods available to the average farmer. So again, the air rifle quickly becomes one of the most efficient forms of lethal control. A little bit of field craft, reconnaissance and planning is required to target rats. Recognising runs and places the rats are frequenting is important. Rats can be targeted during the daytime where populations are very high and their confidence is therefore high too, but on the whole the rats are targeted after dusk. They are also almost exclusively targeted on farmyards, however back gardens, fishing lakes and rubbish dumps, amongst other places where permission is granted, can also provide some sport. An anecdotal recollection of a daytime session at a fishing lake in South Wales, where my friend was a bailiff, allowed us to target rats on an island on the lake. The rats had turned the island into one big rat run and were feeding on the fishing baits thrown in or left on the bank. Some of the animals were actually shot whilst swimming in the lake, which was particularly memorable, but we quickly learned it wasn't a clever or safe idea, as the pellets would skip off the surface if you scored a miss. Back to the farmyard, however. Once you have identified a run, it's a good idea to place a liquid or paste-like bait where you expect a rat to find it, and you also have a good backstop. Nutella and peanut butter is a good mix, 
or even the liquid cup treats that are in handy sachets are great. Anything sticky and sweet that's not removable by the rat will work. They rarely keep still and the bait is placed to cause the animal to pause for your shot. Again, lamps need to be used and I especially recommend the red filter. However, infrared can be a devastating way of targeting these animals as you remain completely unseen by the rats. A little more stealth is required and also an awareness of the wind direction. Rats have a keen sense of smell and will smell you if you are upwind of them, which may cause them not to come out at all. Remaining still and quiet is important too. Rats are generally hunted static and you can do it from the comfort of your vehicle if you can park within range of the run, but on the whole a seated position is the way to do it. Camouflage is largely unnecessary. If there are multiple runs, then moving around the yard quietly and making quick visits to each baited area after a few shots in one area is good practice too. Shot placement can vary with rats. The kill zones include the head, the heart and lung area of the upper body and the upper spine. They are not the toughest of rodents, especially when compared to grey squirrels, so any of the described kill zones are legitimate choices. Shot discipline is especially important at night and I recommend a good recce during the daytime to ascertain hazards and good backstops for your shots. Handling shot rats with your hands is completely out of the question, even with gloves. A trowel, shovel or litter picker should be used to handle the bodies and they should be disposed of in the same way as the pigeons. The reason I say even with gloves is because there is the possibility the rat may not have expired as quickly and as humanely as you would like and a bite off one is extremely deleterious to your health. Leaving them lying around will quickly land you in hot bother with the farmer and so make every effort to retrieve and dispose of any shot rats. Well, I think that about covers it folks. After filming episode 8, you will see I have plenty of work to do with both of these quarry and the next few episodes will be filmed targeting them and putting this theory into practice. Feral pigeons were previously absent from my permission and the rats were at very low numbers, but since the addition of a new building with a large grain store, it allowed the support of both, hopefully giving me the opportunities I lacked and hopefully gain more experience. So I wish you all luck with your air rifle hunting in the future and I hope you found this instructional mover useful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in episode 9. Bye bye for now folks.